Hello again. I'm doing another interview with a patient. This is Brad from the East Coast. And Brad had, has, I think, a very uh, typical story in many ways because the, the treatments that we've done and the progression and improvement, I think, are very typical of uh, the expectations that I want most people to have. Um, although we've had some superstars that have had one or two treatments with 99% of the material cleared out there, uh, Brad has had more, I think, a, a typical experience. So I'll start off and, and say, you know, thank you for uh, coming and talking with me. Um, he's uh, flown, gosh, what is it, about 3,000 miles or so to come all the way out here, which uh, I'm always quite honored with. Um, so let me just start off and ask, uh, of the floaters that you had, was it one eye or both eyes? Both eyes. Okay, was one eye worse than the other or typically about the same? Uh, well, my left eye was a little worse, yes. Okay. Now, of the floaters you have, if you can just briefly describe how they, how they affected your life, your lifestyle, your ability to do your work, play, Basically, what types of problems were these floaters causing for you? Well, they were. I was always conscious of them because in mine were kind of strings and they seemed to be flowing back and forth. When they were most bothersome, when I was outside in, in sunlight, um, when I was on the computer, um, and uh, but in, in less around the house, it was less, but I still was conscious of them. A lot of times, so it was just really annoying, um, you know. And since mine kind of moved, they weren't stationary where I could just forget about them. They were kind of waving in front of me, so right. it was just becoming an annoyance, and to the point where it almost kind of gets you down. Yeah, because you just you're like, gosh, do I have to live with this the rest of my life? And I think you're like most people, where it's not preventing you from driving. You're a, a, a business owner. You're obviously uh, you know young. You're you're very functional in your life and lifestyle. Enjoy photography. Uh, spend a lot of time um, um, post-processing your photos with yes. Photoshop and doing some things like that, which um, again very visually oriented in yes. what you do. And so it didn't prevent you from doing those things. And I think for many people with floaters, it doesn't prevent them from functioning and being very highly functional. It's the annoyance, like you mentioned. It's the awareness. It's it's just there. It's just there. It really is. It really is, and with this day and age, where the internet and email, and you spend a lot of, I spend a lot of time on the computer. It's and it seems to you know, kind of uh, just constantly be there for me. And I think you know, you're you're typical um, of an age group, um, kind of at the lower end of the age group. I treat most of the people probably in their 40s to the 60s or so. And I know that people in their 70s and 80s have a lot of floaters. But I think that it's a different generation. They're less likely to get on the internet and do a Google search and find, try to find a solution, and probably more likely to just to accept what their eye doctor has told them, which is, eh, it's just a floater. You just have to learn to live with it, which I imagine is what you were told at least once somewhere yes. along the past. Yes, I was. My initial consultation was, oh, you just have to learn to deal with it. You don't worry. In a few months, you, you know, you won't notice it or, or it'll go away. Meaning, I think just that you'll kind of get used to it. So it was six, eight months later, and I wasn't getting used to it. It was still there, and so I went back. I went to another optometrist, and they mentioned uh, uh, this type of procedure. So I got on the internet, did a little, uh, did a little bit of research. Um, I had a little bit of treatment on the East Coast, um, and wasn't uh, didn't quite take care of the problem. So. Um, I did some reading on your website and uh, from your testimonials and from reading, I, I just kind of got the feeling that you might be more thorough and then a conversation with you on the phone kind of convinced me. So here I am. And here you are. And I appreciate you coming, willing to come all the way out here. Um, and something that you mentioned is not very typical, which is the optometrist you saw or eye doctor had actually mentioned uh, that. So they they were at least aware of that. And that's not very typical because most yeah. of the time the, the eye doctors uh, aren't even aware of this procedure and, and one of my big missions is to try to get that word out and do more marketing and get more people aware of this and that will be a, a long-term goal that will stretch over the course of years not not weeks or months um, so you mentioned you did have some previous treatment I think a couple treatments and in, yes. in, in both eyes I had some improvement um, I did have so, some improvement um, it um, but not nearly the relief probably I don't know 20 percent improvement so. and and were you told to, to come back and get more treatment or was that kind of uh, I was just told that that's all it could be done for me okay 
So dissatisfied with that, you found me, somehow you yes. found me, you were willing to fly the 3,000 miles or so mm -hmm. and stay a couple nights in a hotel. Now, I'll mention that you, know, you can't tell from this distance here, but your pupils are dilating. We're actually sure. going into a third treatment. So right. uh, we've done consecutive treatments. This is day three. Okay. Um, and I'll ask you, of the floaters, whatever, whatever mixture of floaters that you had going into it, if we'll call that 100% mm -hmm. disregarding the previous treatment. But he said, on the day that you showed up here on my door, and that was 100% of your floaters, right. after the first treatment, what kind of improvement uh, do you think that you achieved with that, or we achieved with that? Um, I'd say about 60%. Okay. A lot of this really, the dark string, the prevalent things in were, were reduced, and so I, 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 it's around 60%. Okay, and I think that that is typically what I quote. I, I, I describe this as a journey of percentages, where that first treatment may be 60-70%, the next treatment after that 60-70%, and if you do the math, you'll never actually get to 100%, but the goal is to try to knock out a moderate amount uh, with each treatment. We had a second treatment yesterday, yes. and you walked in today and told me something nice, which was? You yeah, I think <clears throat> uh, after the second treatment, I think we've gotten rid of about 80% of them from the first day we came right, in. Right. Um, so we're definitely making progress. Uh, and. Uh, Floaters that I do see now are less and less. They're not as dark and prevalent. They're just almost kind of invisible. So they're we're definitely making progress. Good. And we can do consecutive treatments, especially for people who are coming in from outside the area. Someone more local to Southern California might say, let's do a treatment, wait a couple days. Uh, there is a little bit of irritation to the surface of the eyes. And very typically, it might be a little bit red. Um, mildly or moderately or sometimes downright uncomfortable for the first several hours or so, mm -hmm. a few hours, uh, you usually wake up in the morning reasonably comfortable is my guess. Yes. Uh, so it is really just a surface irritation just probably from the contact lens that I use and you know, fortunately the eyes recover very quickly. Uh, so you walked in today with white eyes and you can't really even tell that anything was done to it. So, so that's good, the eyes do recover very quickly. So we're uh, preparing to do a third treatment today. We have the option maybe of doing a little bit of light touch up tomorrow if we need to, or we might say today, you know, we're done and, and, and if we can get you to, I don't know, eight, you know, 90 plus percent, I think we'd both be very, very happy with that. Um, I guess very briefly, if you had a message, if, if you figure people are watching this maybe on YouTube or maybe from my website, and you figure they were in the same boat you were at some point, they were trying to, gather some information about floaters, and, and admittedly, again, there's not very much out there. I've tried to make my website really a very comprehensive resource, and I'm getting better and better at it all the time, um, as far as the graphics and the information. But if there's a message that you, as a, as a patient, who, uh, who's taken the risk, who's found a treatment, uh, you know, almost on your own in some ways, um, you know, what would you want to tell the people who are in the same boat you were? Well, I want to say that um, I, Hopefully, I share with a lot of people, and what I've read on the internet is it can be very frustrating. Um, it's I've even read where it just gets some people into depression. Uh, it, it does have a tendency to get you down, um, and the treatment may be a little bit, uh, you know, seem a little scary. But the treatment itself was really, I mean, you don't feel anything. I mean, you hear some clicking noises, and it was really easy. Um, there's a little bit of irritation in the eyes. But I would, I would say um, if you do have the floaters and you're really frustrated with it, that to me it's been worth the money to fly over here and get a hotel and you know go for the treatments. I mean, it's just such a quality of life difference from before. So um, I would just say if anybody has any apprehension of it, it's, it's, um, I think it's worth, worth the, uh, the treatment. Yeah, and I've come to realize that and, and really thinking about floaters uh, quite a bit over the last year and a half or so, I've come to realize that it's not, it really isn't so much an eye problem as it really is a much more comprehensive visual perception, uh, psychological issue. And I think particularly for, for very highly functional people in their 40s, 50s, and 60s who are working, they're, they're playing, they're socializing, and they have these things, the thought of having to deal with these floaters for the next 20, 30, or 40 years, it is kind of daunting. I mean, yes. I think it is, that's the depressing part of it. Um, it's different than maybe being older and developing some, you know, the body's starting to fall apart. Yeah, you kind of expect that. But I think this is something who, for people who are otherwise dynamically healthy to have this thing, and really in a way a visual disability in some way, um, is, is really quite something. So it is, uh, for myself professionally, it's very exciting to be a part of something that is very innovative 
And it's very rewarding for me to be bringing relief to people who otherwise would have to just suffer this for the next 20, 30, or 40 years or so. Um, and so I'm, I, I think that the patients who have talked to me or, or come to me will probably agree that I'm very accessible. That is, um, I will be glad to talk to you on the phone, sometimes for half an hour or so, just to answer some of your questions. The website at www.gotfloaters.com is um, a really a comprehensive resource. And, and watch the videos, watch the other videos, um, read the information. It should answer most of your questions. But I'll be glad to see you out here in Southern California and hopefully take care of your floaters as well. So thank you, Brad, very much. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much.